pulls out in a lot of the social aspect of it if you really want to do well and keep yourself in line. But um, being in the sport, uh, it's it's a blessing because you're around a lot of like-minded individuals, a lot of people who are willing to investigate what it takes to get to your goal. You're willing to uh, accept defeat, accept um, a loss, and not accept it as a failure, but accept it as a lesson to figure out what you can do to advance. And just being around all these athletes and watching everyone grow together is amazing. And so uh, I encourage more people to find their passion uh, to do it. Um, I will always have something to train for. I love the accountability. I love having seasons where you're on, where you're off. Uh, I like how I can control my weight, the how in tune I am with diet, um, just foods that my body uh, agrees with, foods that my body does not agree with. Uh, and I just being around people that understand that it, it makes it makes it that much better. So, um, to each of their own, I, I definitely encourage, um, uh, some sort of sport that you're passionate about and it has room for growth and bodybuilding has no age limit. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this when I'm seven years old, Lord willing, but um, I know that it's an option. So uh, we'll see how far this takes me. <laughs> yeah, no, quite really. I know Lady a while back, she was 60 and she just did a, a show uh, about a month or so ago. She, she's 61 now. And there's, I think the lady figure, I think she's 72. I mean, I, I've talked to ladies like I'm talking to have conversations, say, you know, like I look at him and say, wow, she's really young. And then realize she's like 50. I say, what? You can't be 50. You, I'm 50. I look like I'm 50 because, you know, I'm born 40, 50 in uh, November. I'm 49 now. And yeah, this sport has evolved over time. Like, you know, how you look at it now, how you look at like how Andrea was like you. She was in physique, but then she moved to his bodybuilding. You have Ashley Jones. Then you have um, people like Sarah Vilgas and Natalia Cuejo and a lot of these ladies like this one lady who was competing at the Arizona Pro Manon in figure. She took second to Jessica Reyes Padilla. She's doing her second show as the Z competitor, her seventh show overall. She's already qualified for figure. You know, and you've seen that as a competitor, how the how the sports are just changing and evolving over time. Um yes, it, it it's amazing. I think that most athletes kind of know what category they want to be in. Um, it's just a matter of accepting it and, and going for it. Um, I always wanted to do women's physique. Um, I did not want to do figure, but I knew that that was the size for me. Um, and then I, I, as I mentioned, two years into the category, it just wasn't, uh, really wasn't my personality. And so seeing all the women in other categories evolve, I think we all kind of know uh, the category for us. Uh, I have a few people ask me if I am thinking about advancing <laughs> up to women's bodybuilding. Uh, not at the moment. <laughs> if I were to advance, it would be by accident. I, I don't I don't feel like I grow that fast. Uh, I think I grow about an average of two, three pounds a year uh, if I'm measuring my muscle. Uh, and I don't even know if that's accurate because the goal is to get leaner and leaner each year. So, um at most four or five pounds a year. So at the rate that in which I'm growing, I don't see myself being competitive for uh, female bodybuilding. I'm only five, five and I typically step on stage low one forties. And so I've been low one forties for the past five years on, I, I get on stage. So I think most women bodybuilders at my height, they're, I'm guessing 155 and up, you know, so lean. So I, I just don't, I don't foresee that um, being something that happens anytime soon. There are some beautiful physique uh, uh, in women's bodybuilding. There are probably about a handful that I just admire. I can just watch all day. But uh, And so that's definitely encouraging if I were to put on a little, a little bit more muscle to go up to the category. But not something I'm aiming for. It's going to happen by accident. But until then, I, I'm very happy in my category now. Yeah, I can say I'm I'm my seeing ladies like most definitely I uh, said again I'm a fan of Andrea Shaw. I think she brings a level of muscle and beauty. It's just so amazing. I mean, you know, you were you competed with her back in the day. You then you were at the Arizona with her. I mean, uh, also I said again, uh, my big brother's competing, Mr. Big Keith Williams. He's competing this weekend, and here he is. He has hand on my girl. I tell him. <laughs> he sent me that picture last year and said, hey, George, I see this picture and hang with Andrea. And he has had my girl. He's my brother. I love him, but I don't. I'm sorry, Eva. I just, I get jealous like that. And he's a great guy. I, <laughs> I always pick him up about that. 
And, you know, who's you working with? Who's your coach? And how long y'all been working together? So my coach, his name is Blue Taylor. Uh, I've been working with him. Um, I turned pro in 2019. So I turned pro at USA's in Nevada, which um, <laughs> that was uh, a miracle, uh, turning pro at that show. Um, but I knew at that time it was time for me to, to move on. Um, a little bit about that, I'll, I'll say, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, I, I Marcus Cottle was my coach um, from the beginning, from 2014 on. He is the reason why I turned pro. Um, his methods is strictly diet and training. Uh, nothing else in, in addition to that. And so for me, I have a very responsive body to uh, diet and a very responsive body to training based on my background. But um, also with that, uh, your body needs a break. And in preparation for 2019 um, to turn pro, my body was tired. I had a couple incident instances where I had to go to the ER uh, for some medical reasons. Another indication that my body was tired and it wasn't his fault or anyone's fault, but I, I was so close to turning pro uh, from the previous attempts. I really wanted, uh, USA's was the next, the next reasonable show for me and I wanted to push it through. And so going to the emergency room, I ended up gaining all this weight and my body just was not responsive, very resistant to some of the methods that I would use to, to, to lose water weight and lose weight. And um, I managed to uh, turn pro by um, th drinking three gallons of water a day in order to lose the water weight uh, that I gained from going to the emergency room and getting put on, um, I put saline um, hydration packs uh, in me or whatever to help like normalize everything for me. Um, and it was, like I said, it wasn't anything to do with training. It was something more internal. But um, I had all this water weight on me, like 15 pounds, and I couldn't get it off. I couldn't sweat it out. There wasn't enough cardio I could do. Nothing was working. So I drank three gallons of water, and I ended up losing about mm -mm, a pound a day, 10 days out. And I wasn't the way I was before, but I was enough to, to go on stage. And miraculously, I turned pro. And I, was, I would have been happy with second. But I ended up winning my class. And if you ever look back on that uh, green suit 2019, I was very puffy. Um, you can see my lines were very faint and it was because I had a lot of medical issues leading up to the show. And so, um, I, um, I give all kudos to, uh, my coach that gave me a mindset that the look that I have on stage, it will always be dominated from training and nutrition. And it's not going to be dominated from anything else, uh, as a, as a value I live by. Um, and it was a hundred percent, uh, I a hundred percent thank my uh, previous coach for that. Uh, as far as my new coach or my current coach, Blue Taylor, he is definitely all about <laughs> training and nutrition as well, too, um, and very conservative with his uh, female athletes. And so you go on this page, you barely see any female athletes. You see a lot of monstrous men. They're all vascular and, and shredded and what have you. But the few female athletes you do see, I really do appreciate their, uh, their conditioning. Um, you, you, can see, you can see that they are very depleted. They are lean. Uh, they're uh, either petite or... Um, they're, they're not very masculine looking uh, at all. They they just look like they have been dieting for a very long time, probably suffer from some, uh, low carb diets, uh, some, uh, depletion uh, methods or what have you. And they look great and they always place well, I always place in the top five. And so, um, I, I stuck with him because uh, I'll say this just the, um, if I'm being, if I'm being transparent, um, I think that, um, Typically, at least I've read being me uh, medical, typically uh, women of color, um, African descent, uh, Hispanic descent, they have uh, weaker kidneys. And so you can't you can't use all the um, oral methods that a lot of coaches uh, propose, uh, rather it's fat burners or, or what have you, it's going to weaken your kidneys and it's going to uh, make you hold on to a lot of water uh, weights. And so looking at the caliber um, and the athletes, that my current coach, uh, coach compared to other coaches, I really do like how the women of color, how, how their um, conditioning uh, turned out. And so I kind of stuck with him. Um, as I mentioned, um, diet and nutrition is what dominates my training. Uh, he is for that. Um, he really does care about our health, our long-term health, not just in prep. Uh, and so I, uh, here I am and he is guiding me. Um, through, he guided me to Olympia last time I went. He's guided me through this season now. So. That's good to have a good relationship with coach because I know some ladies that some coaches would give the same kind of cookie cutter program to um, even to women because you can't give the same thing to a man can give to a woman. And also as, as, as black people, we are genetically different compared to 
other uh, ethnic groups. I know I, I was taking medication because I have issues with high blood pressure, it's genetic, and it got me one point, it got me a swollen neck and I was couldn't talk and my tongue, you know, it, it can affect, especially genetics is a thing, a factor, you know, and it's good that you and your coach have a relationship. Now, when you're training and you know right now you can't do too much because of your hamstring, what's your least and favorite workout while you're working out? Um, <laughs> so I like to train, um, my legs, um, squatting is my favorite, um, exercise. It's I'm claw dominant. I, I can get down pretty, I can get, I can squat pretty heavy. Um, and I, I really do like the way I feel when I'm squatting. I like the adrenaline I, I get the rush, even when I'm, mastering a weight that um, I haven't mastered in a while or I have never mastered before. I, I like how the entire gym stops to make sure I clear the weight. <laughs> I like the way, and, and the way, and then yeah, I'll have people in the background cheering, you know, making sure that I, I might go down, come up slow, but I'll clear it. And they're, they're cheering in the background and watching. So that's always a great feeling. My leg days are typically Wednesdays and Sundays. I'll, uh, I won't. I will do different uh, exercises on those days, but uh, it's a good feeling, especially on Sunday when I would exercise. Uh, my least favorite uh, is a part of the it's, it's deadlifting. I don't enjoy deadlifting. Obviously, that works your uh, hamstrings, your glutes, and your back. I have a very small uh, lower um, small. My back's very small. Uh, it, it correlates with my waist. That gets strained very easily. Uh, my hamstrings are typically weaker. Um, and my glutes are weaker. Um, I just do not, I do not prioritize those. I did not prioritize those exercises um, when I was in figure. And I'll say something from uh, that a lot of people are, are surprised by. I didn't work legs for the first four years in bodybuilding. Um, I'm not saying I didn't do any workouts, but I might do some extensions and some curls and that's it a couple of times a month, but I didn't really work legs. So I was afraid of them growing. So as a consequence, uh, me being a women's physique athlete and actually wanting to, uh, create some, some size, uh, my hamstrings and uh, glutes are underdeveloped compared to my quads. Um, and so, uh, when I do try to push myself with deadlifting, um, exercises or exercises that dominate my hamstrings and glutes, I typically strain something and, as you can see, I have a pulled hamstring. Uh, it wasn't from deadlifting; it was from running. I'm sprinting, but uh, they're just weaker. Ex they're just weaker muscle components on my body, and um, it, it's uncomfortable doing the exercises. And I'm always afraid I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt myself. So, least um, favorite deadlifts, favorite squats, for sure. Yeah, because that's the process. That everything that makes a great bodybuilder, you have to work on your strengths and also work on your weaknesses. You know. And it's a lot of work. Like I said, again, this sport is not very, you know, lucrative, as you know. Uh, you've been in the military. That helps a little bit. Do you have any sponsors or everything's on your shoulders? Uh, no, and it's 100% my fault. Um, I, every now and then I get a couple opportunities, but I am, I'm not on social media as often as I, I could be. Uh, it's just because I just really prioritize training and work. Um, and when I'm at work, I am at work. Um, I am rarely on my phone looking at posts and stuff. And so in order for me to be a little bit more active in social media, then I, it would, it would interfere with my training. I would have to like videotape, you know, make sure it looks good. And I, did, I don't have the time, you know, for it, I have to hire someone to capture, uh, that footage for me and to make it look pretty and over and, or in order to advertise on social media. And so because I could do better on social media, I feel like that's interfering with my sponsor uh, opportunities. But um, I know that uh, that will change. Uh, I just have to really navigate my schedule a little bit better. Uh, I feel when I go to Japan, I'll have an opportunity to reset uh, how far I live from work. Um, that's going to play a huge role in my training, my sleep. And the time I have available to uh, advertise a little bit more of what I do and what I represent. So it'll change here so shortly. Yeah, because sponsorship does help because, you know, the cost of like your space to come here to this show, the cost of your posing suits, the cost of your coach because you got to pay your coach, you know, hair, makeup, everything. For like I say this, for the men, all they got to do is wear banana hammock and a pair of board shorts. 
And y'all ladies, you have to look presentable. You have to like, you know, you know, you say you don't want to do figure because they wanted the high heels. I don't say that one of my jobs is work a strip club and high heels was a thing. That's what they needed. But you still have to make yourself that level of femininity and also that balance of muscle. That's why I say like this it's more of a muscle of masculinity. You have to find that balance. And you know, people are kind of like lurid because they're they're picking the visions that are more, you know, popular, like. As, the, as I call them, the TNA division, as well as the bikini. But you women in physique and women's bodybuilding and figure and fitness, y'all y'all deserve just as much recognition, just so much respect. Um, you know, you this could help y'all in the long run. But people are always going to make these snide remarks like, well, yeah, she's trying to be manly, yeah, yeah, and yada, yada, yada. But like I say, is, if you don't have that same passion and determination as you do, why talk about somebody else? Um, so I guess one when, when it comes to like comments, I, I don't experience that a lot. And there, I do experience it, I just don't experience it a lot. Um, and really, I just I think maybe about hmm, five, seven years ago, I, I would have been a little bit more hurt. Because um, this is who I am. If if anyone was interested in my life and they wanted to uh, research whatever I do have on the internet, social media, you can see my progression. Um, I'll, I'll even post. Even it's not too long ago. I posted a picture of me running track, starting on the starting blocks. Fourteen years old. You can see the muscles in my arms. Like I've always been lean. I've always been athletic. And people have been teasing me for looking masculine my entire um, life. It doesn't hurt my feelings because I don't agree with them. I, and I feel like if people are going to go out of their way to criticize someone else, they have their own internal issues that they have to work towards. I'm just going to pray for them. I'm not going to allow them to disrupt my peace. I like the way that I look. I've always liked the way that I look. I'm not going to allow someone else and their opinions to bring me down because they have to face what they're facing. So... Um, I don't get a lot of criticism. Um, I do get it. I just, it's not often. And um, I, I just feel like, you know, it, it, it's, that's what comes with the sport. There are some women that um, have a little bit more of a masculine look uh, in my category. And to be honest, like, and I didn't feel this way about five, seven years ago, but I feel this way now. I feel like some of the athletes, when you're in it, you're in it. And um, when you aren't happy with how hard you work and the results that you're getting, you might dabble into some some substances that will enhance your look and maybe you evolve into a more masculine version of yourself without even noticing it and maybe you don't care. That's their choice. Like, they're happy with themselves. They're happy with themselves. I'm not going to talk about them, make fun of them. That's I, I look the way that I want to look, and there's always going to be a category for me, whether I evolve or go down. So um, I, I think the important thing is being happy with yourself, liking what you see in the mirror. And if you don't like it, you take control over um, what you dislike so that you're in a position to like it and don't allow outside influences to affect your peace. And so that's just the, the model I live by. And it's been keeping me happy uh, and peaceful uh, moving forward. And I hope others can find that in themselves. So. Yeah, that's good. You should live for you. And like I say, I think you ladies are beautiful. This picture right here, I, I just pulled it up here. You know, this is one here. This is right after, after, just after Arizona. Wow. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, to me, it's beautiful. I, I love all type of women, you know. Growing up from the South, we have women both fall a little more full figure, but I've been a fan of women's body for quite a long time. And I respect y'all ladies. And I and also I, you know, I remember when I first was uh it was this uh chat room. I first got into it, you know, and this guy told me, say, hey kid, you like women's body I said, yeah, I like him a fan of it. I say, well, it's an old smoke saying. I say, what's that? I say, when you ladies rock hard, we'll rock hard. So that's a no simple story. But yeah, you have to be committed and passionate about this boy. You have to understand the sacrifice you have to make and, you know, the time you have to put into it. And also diving and training, you know, and I know you're doing, you're competing tomorrow. What's that thing that you've been desiring since you're on prep? What's that thing that's calling you, Yvonne? Share with us. Hmm? Like a craving, like something I want to eat when my prep is over. Is that what you're asking? 
Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I have this every prep, and I'll tell myself it gets it gets it gets so wild that I'll find myself on TikTok looking at food, you know, just watching people uh, make recipes that I will never make and I'll probably never eat. But knowing that I can is the what I desire. I'll say I'm not a big pizza fan. I've never been a big pizza fan. Um, I'm not really big on burgers and french fries. Uh, I'll eat them, but I would never just decide that I crave it. I grew up in San Diego. I'm a very big fan of tacos. Uh, I typically incorporate uh, the soft street tacos I make of myself on the weekend. So uh, it's not something that I've been without, you know, uh, leading up to the show, I've been without, um, especially closing in, but it's not, it's not so like neglected in my diet to the point where I, I can't, can't wait to have it. Uh, if I'm being honest, um, I probably won't, but knowing that I can have like a piece of a brownie, like in the morning with my black coffee, knowing I can have it, it's the freedom I'm looking forward to. I probably won't eat it because I don't like the way it will make my stomach feel. But knowing I can if I if I wanted to, that's what I'm looking forward to is that freedom. Something about like even now, like I only can have like the rest of what's in this bottle for the rest of the night before I uh, cut my water off. And all of a sudden, I'm suddenly thirsty. <laughs> so never thirsty. I'm always doing so, uh, I always do so poorly with my water intake. It's always such a chore to drink my water. But when you tell me I can't have it, then suddenly I become thirsty. And so I just think being deprived of certain nutrients and foods make you crave it. But I can't honestly say that there's something that I really can't wait to have after a show. It's just either I can incorporate it in or uh, I think it's just more of the freedom. In the moment that you give it to me, I won't want it. So... Yeah. Everybody has a different taste of what they like or what they want. I mean, like I said, it's about who you are and, you know, and your feelings. And like I said, it's tough. Like people don't understand when y'all competitors are up there on stage, y'all are tired, y'all are dehydrated, y'all are hangry. You're going to cut back on your water. I mean, I like to drink water, but sometimes water is boy. I like a little something with a little sweet to it. I mean, I understand. But you know what? This is a lot that people need to understand the sacrifices again and the time you put into this sport and i know you're getting ready you get this show coming up and this could possibly get you to your olympic qualification and you know i i do truly wish you the best of luck on that i mean like i said there's a maze who were very present. i think one way i recognize who's competing she competed also with you that's jessica campbell she competed with you yeah. back in yeah 2022 yeah and um, you know, and um, there was some ladies on the list that it dropped off, partic particularly. I think I saw a female challenge, female Biden challenge, predicted that you, Jessica, and another lady are possibly going to be the you know contenders for the title. But like I said, this is like anything; no one ever really knows, especially when you get into a fight. You know, and you never know who's going to really win. Sometimes it's, it's not easy. Like you got a fight coming up in a couple of months: Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Hey, Mike Tyson may be seven years old, but he's gonna knock that boy's head off. I'm gonna be honest with you. But you know. You, as being an athlete, a woman, a service person in the military, you know, what would you tell somebody who wants to get into sport? What would you, advice you would give them if they think about getting into bodybuilding? Um, that's a good question. And I'm, I think I thought about this in a perspective of my own and a perspective of someone else. Um, I want to make sure that if you're going to get into the sport, that you're not in love with the result, that you actually can learn to love the process. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing uh, with it. It's um, it's not fun getting up early in the morning uh, to, to train, but I know I love the way that I feel when I'm actively sweating. I love the way that I feel after I train. I love how responsible I feel knowing that I burn calories before consuming food. Um, and I love the respect that I get because people know that I get up early in order to commit to training. Um, I like the way that I feel when I eat foods. I think the food tastes amazing. Like eating all fish. I've been eating all fish for the last three and a half or so months, but I like the way that I season it and I'm not tired of it. And so I think that um, I, I cook my own food. Um, if you get tired of your food, figure out a different way to season it, grill your chicken a certain way, marinate it a certain way, but you have to love the working out portion. You don't have to love every aspect of it, but maybe you can sandwich something you love, something you dislike and something you love to get through it. 
make sure your food tastes good, that you don't mind eating it. That way you don't have to have competing values when it comes to something you prepare and something you can purchase um, when it's convenient. When you like your food, you like the way it tastes, it's easier to stick with it. And then just enjoy the weekly progress that you do make. Every week you're going to see a little bit of a change, whether the weight goes down or your body changes, and that will keep give you enough motivation to, to carry forward. And before you know it, 10 weeks goes by, and then your muscles are showing on your arms and your abs are showing and your body's developing because you're in love with the process. But so many people just love the respect that you get from winning a show on stage and they think they want to commit to a bodybuilding and uh, show. And when you overwhelm them with a meal plan and training regimen and all these things you have to incorporate, they get overwhelmed and they get stressed out or they go through it through with it and they become very depressed and all these other directions that you go, you have to love the process. And so um, really it's going to start with changing some behaviors that you may have that you have to get rid of in order to fully commit to it. But once you love the process, I don't see anyone stopping uh, the competition lifestyle, you know, anytime, whether you compete once and never again, you will like forever incorporate the way, uh, some of the measures bodybuilders do uh, when it comes to training, eating clean, because you like the way it makes you feel. So I think that's the most important factor, loving the process, loving training, loving some aspect of training, loving uh, clean foods, how it makes you feel, being in tune with your body. Those are important factors. Um, and it 